Hey guys, it's Mario here coming at you with a quick video today to discuss three reasons why you and I might overeat during these holidays and what you can do about it and as well as why it doesn't really matter. So, Christmas period, I mean it's Christmas tomorrow now, it's 24th of December, I'm filming this video for you guys, I hope you guys are having an amazing time, I wish everybody awesome holidays, making those good holidays gains, enjoying time with your family, with your friends, really making the best out of this time. But I've been getting a lot of questions. I mean, for the last 10 days, I would say every single day, there's been at least one question via email asking, how do you manage your diet during holidays? How do you stick to your calories? How do you stick to your macros? Guys would send this huge recipe, I mean, saying like, oh, my mom made this awesome pie and I don't know how to track it in my fitness pal. And I can sense that there's a lot of stress going on. I can sense that there's a lot of need for control while reading those emails and I decided to make this video just to address the issue as well as to point out what are some of the factors that might impact us and why it is it driving us to overeat because, not just because of the holiday period, but as well as throughout the rest of the year, these things can play a huge role. And we know that average American, I mean, just looking at someone probably not interested in fitness and nutrition as much as me and you, will gain most of their weight during the holiday period. So it's kind of that combination of Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year. This is where most people in the United States gain their most weight throughout the year. As well as when you look at Germany, it's very similar because of the similar holidays. As well as in Japan, it is a little bit shifted toward May, end of April because they have holidays during that period of time. So generally holidays make us overeat. We know that, we have the data. I've made a video on that uh, just a while back. So I'm gonna link that video in the description below. So, but why, why is this happening? So I'm gonna give you three reasons. Number one reason, uh, we're facing a lot of food variety. So what is food variety? have to do with overeating? Well, food variety is overriding one very specific mechanism called a sensory specific satiety. Basically, when you're consuming one food, one taste, one specific taste, you will get full on that taste very, very fast. So much, much faster than if you have a whole bunch of tastes. And we have a lot of research in this. We have a lot of data on this. This is the so-called uh, buffet effect where a lot of us will overeat if we have a lot of food variety. I mean, this is a mechanism that probably kept us alive when we're during those hunter-gatherer years, when we we're hunting around, we, we would seek out a lot of variety because variety means more different types of nutrients and generally better survival. But in today's environment, when we have so much variety and it is so easy to get so much variety, we're dealing more with the issue of overeating than being under uh, underweight or having issues with survival. It's more like, okay, how do we uh, stop being overweight, which is now two thirds of uh, United States. So looking at uh, food variety, I mean, it is very clear. I mean, look at all the research. I'm gonna link a bunch of studies in the description below. Food variety drives overeating because when you get full on, let's say your nice little uh, chocolate covered pretzels, now all of a sudden someone brings you like some, your long lost cousin just appears and brings some awesome new cookies. Hey, try out these cookies. And you try out the cookies. Okay, someone else brings some chocolate milk. Hey, I can drink some chocolate milk. Then you add on top of that some other different types of cakes. And all of a sudden you ate two, 3,000 calories extra because now you wanted to try out everything. And it's kind of that one specific food has almost like its own little stomach. And that stomach, I mean, not physically, but just uh, mentally it has one, one little stomach. And once you get full on that food, you can always add something else that has a little bit of a different flavor. I mean, look at historically, we know that the um, French emperors, the kings, they used to have these crazy 12, 14 course meals where they would just the, the chefs back then even, they knew how to manipulate different tastes so they can kind of avoid dispensary specific satiety and make sure that the emperor can have a huge feast and still keep on eating. So that's kind of the main reason, just having so much variety around us and that is normal, that is during the holiday periods, we are enjoying food and that is one way we celebrate. So moving on to the point number two, we're dealing with a, a simple equation here, which is, how much effort do you really need to put in to get the food? So it's kind of that low cost of effort, basically no um, resource is required for you to get the food. So food environment, the food is there and it's very easily accessible for you. And we as human beings, we're uh, wired, we're hardwired to be opportunistic eaters. Basically when food is readily available, we will more likely 
eat that food and we eat a lot of that food just because we're wired like that. And this is well explained. I mean, there's a bunch of research studies, a great book on this called Mindless Eating by Brian Wonsink where you don't even have to be hungry to eat. I mean, we eat so much without ever being hungry just because the food is there. This is, I mean, you probably had experience uh, with this. I mean, if there's cookies on the table, you're gonna eat, let's say, two to 300 calories extra that day without even knowing that you ate those cookies. So it's uh, related to non-homeostatic eating. So non-homeostatic eating meaning that you're eating without even being hungry. I don't think anybody is really hungry during the holiday period, but we still eat so much just because there's really no effort. The barrier to get to food is very, very low. I mean, as a matter of fact, people are shoving food down your throat most of the time, and that is one reason why we will overeat during the holiday period, and it is not really that much you can do about it. In a normal scenario, let's say outside of the holiday period, you can create small barriers to prevent yourself from overeating. You can kind of move the chocolate to somewhere other than your house. You can just put it somewhere in your garage or something like that. You can basically keep certain snacks that you can't really control yourself around outside of the house. For me personally, this is uh, peanut butter. So if I have peanut butter somewhere in the house, it is going to be consumed very, very fast. I will not be able to control myself. So for me, that is kind of my trigger food. I will not be able to control myself. So I have to keep the peanut butter outside of the house. So very simple equation, basically the food environment, our brain is always calculating how much effort do I really need to put in to get this food and I mean during holidays it's kind of like one calorie spend, I mean I can just reach out to this table here and just bam, grab a slice of cake and just eat it and that is basically what I was wired for to survive. And now the third factor, something that a lot of people don't really know about and that is how just being surrounded and being with large groups of people is affecting how much you eat. It's actually kind of almost a, a dose response uh, effect. When you are with more and more people, so the more people you are with, you will eat more. And this is well studied. I mean, there's a great paper from uh, 2000. I'm gonna link in the description below a full paper on studying human eating behavior. Essentially is that if you, could, if you eat a lot of food with let's say a bunch of friends, let's say six friends, you will consume about 70% more calories. And if there's eight, nine, 10 people, that calorie increase just in keeps going up. So we will eat more when we're other people. And we know that we eat more during the weekends. We know that we eat more in social gatherings, not just when it's come, coming down to a buffet, but also when it's coming down to regular meals, we tend to eat and overconsume calories. So now th those are the three effects, right? We're talking about variety, we're talking about environment, we're talking about uh, the social situation, but why doesn't this really matter? Why am I saying that this doesn't matter? Well, look, holidays, as much as we think that they're a big deal, this is the time of the year where you do not want to be uh, on a strict fat loss diet. So holidays are not going to make you rip. Same as having one vegetable a day uh, once a month is not going to make you shredded or it's not gonna make you healthier. Really what it comes down to, what are you doing for the rest of the year? What are you doing for the other 320, 30 days of the year? And not just what are you doing on Christmas? So a lot of people will now focus, okay, I wanna be in a deficit on Christmas. Why the hell would you wanna be in a deficit on Christmas? So when you're consuming, let's say, when you're having lunch with your family, when you're having dinner with your friends and things like that, why would you wanna be in a caloric deficit during that period? It just does not make any sense. And the reason why a lot of people are stressing on this is because they procrastinated on the, managing their fat loss diet, managing their body weight in general and training outside of the holiday period. And now when it's time for holidays, now it's kind of something is lit up a fire under your ass that they now want to try to um, kind of compensate for the fact that you might be slacking for the rest of the year. If you've done your year correctly and luckily for you watching this video, you have a new year, new day, new period of time where you can go at it, just do it correctly then. And when the holidays come, you can actually time either a diet break or you can just let loose a little bit. And I don't mean you wanna go completely off the rails in that black and white mindset, kind of the um, YOLO mode. This is actually documented in research and people that, <laughs> that are restraining themselves for the most part when they are giving more food, they will eat a lot more because of that restriction in the period of fat loss. So they, you kind of compensate for that later on. So if you've done your job, 
throughout the year, if you planned out your diet properly, I mean your diet, by that I mean your lifestyle and your nutrition, so you went through different phases, maybe a couple of uh, cuts, maybe some fat loss there, and then now you move on to let's say a lean gaining phase, now you wanna do a mini cut or something like that, how you planned out your year, this is a really good time, instead of stressing, instead of worrying about what you're gonna eat for Christmas, spend this time reflecting how this year went, so what did you do this year, and how you're going to plan the next year. This is gonna give you much, much higher return investment than stressing about something that it's completely natural and that is that you wanna have a little bit of freedom during the holidays. Use this period of time to de-stress a little bit, to play it a little bit looser, try to play get the guessing game with flexible dieting, try to guess calories and macros, try to play around with that a little bit. Don't let it just go full on YOLO as I said where you just overeat an, an enormous amount of calories because I know you can, I know you can, I can as well. It is not that hard. And use it also the period of time, if you are eating more food, just to show up in the gym, do a session 30 minutes, 45 minutes, just knock out a couple of sets, use those extra calories to get stronger, to turn that potentially into uh, regaining some of the muscle loss. If you've been, let's say, on a, de, uh, on a diet before the holiday period, if you haven't, you can even use this uh, phase to kind of break through some strength plateaus because now you have a lot more food, a lot more energy. So hope you guys enjoyed. I mean, I just wanted to share this with you guys. I'm really not a big fan of dieting during the holiday period. I don't think it's really appropriate and just in a sense that you will be the weirdo anyway if you're into this uh, whole fitness uh, nutrition thing very, very deep. A lot of people won't resonate with that and that is fine to do that a little bit, but Think about the consequence of you, let's say, playing that uh, stress and that restriction game during the holiday period, you will, eventually you will crack, right? Because your willpower will be depleted as well as at the same time, you won't be able to enjoy the holidays as much because you're so stressed, you cannot even enjoy the time because all the time you're gonna be thinking about, okay, what's gonna be the next meal? How am I gonna control myself? What am I gonna do with my cousin? Brings my that, that chocolate cake, you know, how am I gonna say no? And you're gonna spend so much energy on that instead of investing that energy, enjoying the present moment with your family, with your friends, and you know what? You can have fun without food, right? Food can just be a little thing there. It doesn't have to be everything. And that's a little bit of a hard reality check for a lot of us that are so immersed into nutrition and so immersed into fat loss and dieting and all this stuff that we sometimes forget that food is just there to bring people together and it's not just about the food. And that is a big lesson here and something that takes a couple of takes, a couple of years to kind of uh, go into this. I remember a couple of years back and during the holidays, I was super, super paranoid. I know where you're coming from. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know in the comments below. How do you plan on tackling the holidays? Do you find this video helpful? Make sure to hit that thumbs up button below to like the video. Helps really to get more views, helps get more people exposed to the videos, help them out during the holidays. I know a lot of people are struggling with this. Aside from that, hope you guys enjoyed. Have a great time. Um, Merry Christmas. If you're celebrating, if you're not celebrating, you should be celebrating. I celebrate everything. I celebrate all the holidays, regardless of the religion, regardless of, of who the hell is celebrating that. I'm also celebrating every single day every day is a holiday and it's at least the way um, my mindset works so hope you guys are enjoying your time I will not be posting a video tomorrow on Christmas because it's just it is Christmas I will just take that day off and just enjoy my time and plan some really cool content for the future so hope you are having an amazing time Merry Christmas again uh, have a great day and I will see you guys in the next video peace